thanks so much for stopping by my channel today. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Today I'm going to show you how I'm painting an orange flower arrangement on this vase. This vase is a vase that can be used, multi-use actually. If you're going to paint it for a piece of home decor, or a piece, maybe even a nice gift, however you choose to use it, um, you can paint all around the vase. Today I'm just going to paint in the front part of the vase just for the video. But you can add a candle on the inside of it. If you want to put flowers inside of it. If you want to put some water with floating candles, you can do that. You can fill it with candy. Whatever, however you want to use it. There are multi-uses for it. Today I am going to be using a flat brush number 12 and a number 8. These both are by Plaid. They're one-stroke brushes. I'm also going to be using a Westonia Fine Line Brush, a quarter-inch scruffy brush, also a one-stroke Plaid brush, and then a um, stylus to do a little bit of dotting. Colors I'm using. using a variety of colors here. Using Vivid Orange, Autumn Leaves, Pure Orange, Wicker White, Happy Green, Moon Yellow, a little bit of Burnt Umber, and Thicket. I think I got them all. If I, if I haven't, I will throw them in as I realize that I've not gotten them. <laughs> How do you want to say? Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, I am dipping my brush in all of the oranges. Okay, this is, I'm not doing a specific one stroke load of the brush. Literally tipping each side of the brush and then going back in and tipping it back in with the lightest green, or I'm sorry, lightest orange. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, I am really into trying to make my strokes very opaque and you'll notice that. So this is just a real easy leaf, or not leaf, I'm sorry, petal to create. And then once I get the different colors of orange on here, I've gone back in and dipped one side of my brush into white, the wicker white. I am going to keep loading and, and turning as I do this flower. It is going to be a five petal flower. And then I just go back in, like I said, and tip a little bit of white in here. And you can work it as much as you want, but this, as you will see, will give it a little bit more opaque, more of an opaque look. You can make your leaves a little bit pointier if you want. Basically on this I will go just do a few little strokes and go like this, pull up and then I'm going to come back and then widen it out again. I'm going to go ahead and dip my edge into the white. And I'm going to just easily come back and come and back into the center. If I want, if I feel like I need to have it a little bit darker here, I can go ahead and just dip that part of my brush into that color and then continue to turn it. Pretty easy, right? I am always a big fan of my flat brushes. And you'll see that those are, for whatever reason, this style of brush is the brush that I have used the most while I've in my paintings. So I'm going to do it again here, like that, pull it, and then just pull, push and pull it back. And you don't have to dip it in the white every single time if you don't want to. I'm just trying to give it a little bit of... I don't know, just a little bit of a different look in the center, brighten it up a little bit and then keep turning it. 
And then here we go again for the final flower. And I'm trying to connect all of them so there's not an opening. If you happen to end up with an opening where your petals are not all connecting, that's fine. It's not a biggie. Because on some, some flower arrangements, you want it to have more of a space in between the petals. On this one, I'm not really that concerned with it. And you can also make these petals you know, longer and thinner. Or you can have some plumpness to them. Like that's a little bit fatter than some of the other ones. No big deal. It's fine. Alright, so I'm going to continue on. On the big ones, I'm going to do them in a set of three. And I do overlap some when I'm painting because I think in in real life you would you know flowers do overlap when they're in an arrangement they're not all separated if you don't like to overlap or you're afraid to do that then you don't have to you can just paint them beside each other if you get too much paint on your brush because painting like I'm doing right now can can uh, cause a build up a paint on your brush, just scoop it off. Or if you have a towel, wipe it on that, or paper towel, whatever you're working with is fine. And I'm going to do my best not to mess up the painting while I'm turning this. I have to really work on that sometimes because I have a tendency to either stick my fingers in it or touch the other side when I'm working on something that's round and not flat. And we'll just keep working on it here. I hope you find this peaceful. I mean, I, I really think Painting can be very relaxing as long as it's not something that you're trying to perfect and you're not getting it, <laughs> then it can be kind of frustrating. See, it's pretty even if you just left it with the oranges. I just like a little bit of a mixture there. And I'm not one to have a lot of paint on my brush. I mean, I want enough paint for coverage, but not it to not be so thick that just kind of running over and making it hard to get crisp edges or crisp petals. And you can show some movement in your in your petals. Typically, since I'm doing be you know doing this for people that are more beginner level. I don't do a lot of that because I just want to keep it simple. And then I'm just going to head over to this side and do kind of a similar. They're all, you know, the same flower, but I'm just trying to keep it this direction so I'm not rolling my face over too much and then hitting it on the other side. going to overlap here and you can make them different sizes too. All your flowers don't have to be the same size when you're making a spread either. One thing you have to remember when you're doing glass painting and I like to try to remind people of this while I'm doing it. Make sure that you start off with clean glass so that you don't run the risk of the paint not adhering nicely to your glass. Now that means you can wash it with soap and water, dry it, it would be fine. Or if you feel the need to, you can also then clean it with rubbing alcohol just to ensure that you have gotten all the oils and excess dirt off 
of your glass before you start painting. That just gives you better coverage, trying to keep off the oil from you know, being handled or any kind of lint that might have settled on it. You, know, you just don't know. There's so much flying around in the air all the time, but that helps. And then once you're finished with this paint, I use folk art. Oh, I didn't. I did get my paint. I'm sorry. I couldn't remember if I did or not. Um, it, I use all folk art products for my glass painting. Some of them are uh, multi-surface. Some of them are uh, enamel. So. They basically have the same, the same requirements as far as air drying, baking, and such. These paints do not have to be baked. It does give them added durability if you bake them, but you don't have to. If you are going to bake them, please allow at least an hour drying time before you put them into the oven. It is very, very important that you place them in a cold oven and then you preheat the oven. I always add the preheat time to my bake time. So if the paint from the manufacturer's guidelines say to give it half an hour paint, uh, bake time, then what that means to me is 50 minutes total because in my oven, it takes about 20 minutes for it to heat up. So that's what you need to know. Uh, then when it's done, when you finish baking, turn it off, allow your glassware to completely cool down. That is very important. The main thing to keep in mind with your glassware is that if there's any sudden change in temperature, that is what, what will promote breakage. If you do everything slowly and gradually, then that risk is, is minimalized, if not totally eliminated. So that's why it's important to follow those guidelines because, you know, after your hard work here, painting, you don't want your glass were to break, of course. You want it to be there for you to enjoy or to gift it if you're doing these as gifts. Make awesome, awesome, awesome holiday gifts. The thing of it is, even if somebody doesn't actually drink as far as alcohol goes, because I'm not a big drinker, they make nice gifts don't even have to to bake or not bake but paint on a like a wine glass or whatever look you know I'm doing on this one I am doing I'm not doing wine glasses I'm doing a, a vase you know make make some different types of home decor pieces to give to people or do if you're going to do glassware and you, you want it to be something to drink out of, do mugs, do everyday water glasses. It's simple. You know, it's just, you just don't have to be uh, something to drink alcohol out of. So, you know, keep that in mind. Just some food for thought. Now, my next step here. I'm going to give this a little bit of, not that it really matters too much, but a little bit of time just to, to dry somewhat. And I'm going to start doing the greenery because I want to tap in the center, work on the center part. Alright, so what I'm doing now is I had mixed some of my that burnt umber with my thicket to make more of a olive kind of a design or design color not design and so that's what I'm doing now I'm going to create
create a little bottom here and I am pulling in some of the orange. So you might find yourself doing some little little bit of tapping to, to avoid that. Sometimes it's hard to get the opaque look and I'm just really into that. And some combinations really make for awesome coverage. And then some don't. That's just not, not the coverage I want right here. So I'm just going to tap it in a little bit. It might have some texture to it. Honestly, I don't care. And then I'm just going to come in here and just kind of do some pulling down, which kind of goes into it a little bit. Just these little pulls. And then take my the chisel edge of my brush and just kind of pull it into the glass like that. Now on this one, it's upside down a little bit. I am choosing to come up in here. And I don't have to do it this way, but I am going to... Sorry, I got so many colors mixed here, trying to, trying to make it a little bit more opaque. But I am going to just do a connect it where I just pull it, pull these colors down. And I can turn it, turn my brush, because depending on how you turn your brush, a lot of times is how the color shows. And then pull it like that. I can actually, you know, still do this kind of a bottom if I want on it, but I'm not choosing to do that. I'm just going to push, you know, touch and pull. Alright, so let's go back. Well, I did that part. Let me go ahead and, I'm going to go ahead and touch, kind of skip around here, I'm sorry. I'm going to take a little bit of the burnt umber and the white, tap it on my dish, and basically it's like this. Then what I'm going to do is on these open ones, I am going to tap, push it down and tap. Now, if you feel like you want to give it some drying time, because, you know, it's a little bit more difficult to do this when you were trying to do it over, you know, wet paint. So you're doing wet on wet. A little bit more difficult. Makes it a lot easier to probably get the, the look you want if it's not wet. It's easier to press down on it and get the, the design. But when you've got wet paint, then you tend to not want to pounce it as hard. Does that make sense? And so it's not as clean of a look, but it's fine. You get the gist, right? All right, so then we're going to go, go like that. They don't all have to look the same, which is good because mine don't typically all look the same. They're similar. Alright, so here we go. This one I might want to tap it a little bit more. Put a little bit darker paint in there. If you're seeing this okay all right so I have those tapped in I think on this one over here it's kind of like it's not quite open I am going to put a center in it originally I wasn't going to have it look like this but I think I am going to tap a little bit of a center to it not too big Alright, so we're going to leave that one like that. These are all tapped in now. And so then we're going to go back to the small brush. 
Now when you're when you're doing the leaves, because I definitely like leaves, you know, you can do it where you're doing like just some whimsical little vines and push and pull. Or go like this, sorry. Or like that. I don't know how I initially did it. You don't even have to hook up to the vine itself if you want them just to be kind of whimsical. If you want them to be a little bit thicker, you can do that too. Make it make the vine thicker. I am just going to do like just a couple combinations of, of uh, leaves here. I wish this was coming out more opaque though. That's what's kind of bothering me here. I said it's not, but. And then I can come down like that. Just doing the longer leaves. I'm not going to do any of my fun, fun leaves here today. My wiggle wheat leaves, my favorite on this design. But to have these, see I'm just having a hard time on the glass to get it to be more opaque looking. I don't like it to not be. You can do it awesomely on paper. A lot of times it just depends on how, how opaque the paint itself is, the color. Because if you notice on some of the colors they can be really thin. And then some of them are very opaque, or they're more opaque if they are done over an area that's already painted. If that makes sense. That way, pull that in. And you can make them just really long, or you can make them short. And you can also go over them again too once they dry if you feel like they're just too thin. Because my concern that I would have is if they're not more opaque, they're going to be too thin and then they're not going to be durable. That's my a lot of times my concern about that is the fact that they're they're not durable if you do it that way. Alright, so let's just keep going with this design. And then you can come over here if you want to add, add another branch you know, coming out to the side. Or you could even make this brown if you wanted it to be more like a, an actual branch from a tree even. And not from the flower. Either way. Either way would be fine. And again I'm just going to dip my brush and then pull it. If you want it connected, you can draw little little stems to them. Or you can do this and then you know just do maybe the single color and come back over it with the green or another color. You know, there's just a variety of ways to do it. But it's up to you. However, whatever floats your boat. I'm just really open to that, you know, I really truly believe that you got to do it, you know, you can look at some of these work, make it your own by doing some changes to it, don't have to do exactly what they're doing or how they're doing it, get inspired by it, because copying isn't, isn't the way to go. Alright, so I'm going to do some more over here, and you can vary the colors as far as you know dark on top, dark on, on the bottom. You can make it where you really pay attention to where the light source is and and do it that direction to where the lights on top, the lights on bottom just depends on you know what your where your light source is coming from. And I'm just going through and just pulling some little wispy things from the branch here coming down. Alright, and one other area I'd like to touch on before I continue is to do some little leaves that come up from these little uh, 
kind of like partially opened or not opened like buds. And you can put more in here. I mean, I like to do a lot of leaves, but you don't have to. You know, it's my... What I like to do doesn't necessarily mean that's you know, how you like something to look. So, again, make it your own. I can't stress that enough. You know, it's okay to take other people's... Uh, what they're doing and, pay, you know, watch them and, and such, but then to copy them... And that's not, not so much okay. <laughs> that's not so, so, that's not a good idea. That's when you get people very angry at you. You make it yours. You know, put your touch to it. That's, that's all. Put your touch to it. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, like, so I'll try to do this quickly. I don't want this to be an incredibly long video. But I have my, my nail brush my fine liner and I can even go over that leaf a little bit because you know, you're hitting the inside of my flower so I can do that too just kind of make them look a little I don't want to say whimsical just kind of free flowing going in different directions I don't have to go on the same direction but this brush is just phenomenal I think for this type of painting for me it is it's a it's awesome because so I've always had a hard time getting things especially just with a regular with a regular uh, liner brush trying to get just the fine wispier kind of pulls I just have a heck of a time with them and I know you can do more of an inky type solution which is it, which is fine, but maybe you don't always have a, have the medium to do that with. And with glass, you can't use water. Never thin your paint or such with water when you're painting on glass, if, especially if it's a drinking glass and something that's going to be washed and used more frequently. Now, this type of thing here, you know, you really don't even have to bake. But for durability purposes, if it's something that's going to be sitting out and about and, and people are going to be maybe touching it or you're going to be touching it and putting candles in it, that kind of thing, you can. I'm just putting a little bit of tent, like tendril kind of things right here because that's typically that's the back of the, of the, of the leaves or the petals. All right, so then I'm going to take my little... Uh, brush here, or not brush, but my, why can I think of the name of I said it when I first did it. I'm going to do the dots here, and I'm just putting some dots around the center, put a little bit maybe into the center itself, just ever so lightly, and yeah, you might pull out some of the brown, not a biggie. I'm just going to do one color. You could actually do a few colors. If you want to make it show up more, but since I already did the the uh, painting with the uh, nail brush with the white, I'm just going to leave it leave it alone. And just keep going. All right. And I'm doing it as if the brown were the bottom. Let's see if I got them all. I think I did, by George. I mean, I could put a little bit on here if you wanted to, but this is more of the inside is closed up. So, but yeah, I'm going to leave it like this for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And share, share, share. I would definitely appreciate it. Again, I hope you like this. Let me know if you give it a try. It would be nice to hear from you in the comments below. 
and until the next time, I, I will see you then. You have a good one.